our point of discussion today is cortisol and if we get the understandings of the cortisol we will be able to understand that how stress is responsible to cause gain in the weight and diabetes so let's uh, get to the point that is cortisol and uh, the way it is synthesized and the way it is controlling our body and the way it is controlling these two mechanisms in the human body in our body so the very first beginning we'll start from the stress as we get the stress now this stress because of the several factors because of study because of mobile phone social media and whatsoever is causing you the stress that stress will stimulate the hypothalamus in the hypothalamus special cells will be stimulated special nuclei those will release corticotropin releasing hormone that corticotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus will start moving via a portal system now is hypophysial i have hypophysial portal system hypophysial portal system now we have two connections with the hypothalamus one is uh, to the anterior another is to the posterior now this one to the posterior anterior is is the by mean of the portal system known as hypophysial portal system so from the uh, hypothalamus corticotropin releasing hormone will be uh, forwarded will move uh, will start moving via the hypophysial portal system to the anterior pituitary then in the anterior, anterior uh, pituitary we have several cells several regions and one of the regions is actually for the synthesis of adrenocorticotropin releasing hormone this hormone will be released from the anterior pituitary now this hormone will move towards it is telling you the uh, its path by its name okay so if we consider the name we'll get where it is moving adrenal corticotropic hormone such hormone that is moving towards the adrenal cortex so it will move towards the cortex of the adrenal now we know about the adrenal which is a gland on the renal system this is our kidney so on this kidney we have a gland known as adrenal gland now this adrenal gland has got two portions cortex and medulla the very first one is cortex the second one is medulla now the cortex is further divided into three uh, layers three portions granulosa fasciculata and reticula so now from the fasciculata what is happening here by in the fascicula so here adrenocorticotropin releasing hormone will target the fascicula of the cortex where steroidogenesis will take place now several steroids will be synthesized one of those is cortisol now cortisol has got two paths number one path is it will move towards the gluconeogenesis plus inhibition of the insulin uh, action means the action of the insulin will be a kind inhibited and here the next path is the second path is it will move towards the medulla now from the cortex the cortisol will move towards the medulla and in the medulla as it is diffusing to the medulla it will cause the stimulation that is the release of the adrenaline now this adrenaline is responsible to deal with uh, with the immediate actions with respect to the stress whatever uh, is the type of the stress according to the stress this um, adrenaline will do the action so now what is adrenaline doing we know all during the stress what we are doing we are actually fighting or doing the flight from the stress so this adrenaline is actually helping us and in the meanwhile cortisol is also helping us that is it is providing the gluconeogenesis means it is increasing the blood glucose level and in the meanwhile it is inhibiting the insulin to decrease the blood glucose level means if the insulin is inhibited the glucose level will not shoot down and in the meanwhile the glucose level in the blood will be will remain high and will be used accordingly where to uh, compensate uh, the stress so whatsoever is the stress causing to your body so this the stress will be a kind managed and what if the stress is uh, a kind of finished what will happen insulin will recover its action will recover it will start decreasing the blood glucose level and cortisol's action will decrease so its action was to inhibit the insulin so now there won't be any inhibition there will be a kind activation of the insulin's activity and gluconeogenesis will uh, vanish so in the meanwhile what will happen the glucose will start moving back towards the liver and muscle where it will be stored and it will also be used by the cells so like this what will happen the glucose never will be a kind maintained what if you are in the continuous stress like in chronic stress what is happening to your body this high stress will increase the cortisol level in the body so when the cortisol level is increased in the body what is happening just concentrate here by i told you in the beginning cortisol when it is increased you will get gluconeogenesis means glucose level in the body will remain high in the blood the glucose level will remain high and insulin's action will be decreased so what is happening here by the glucose which is synthesized because of the gluconeogenesis is not 
moving towards the cell because insulin is not doing its job. So what will happen, the glucose level will remain high in the body and this glucose which is obtained from the gluconeogenesis, this glucose will move towards adipose tissues and it will start converting directly to the fat. So we'll get the uh, fat, belly fat. May, uh, the very specific and the very first point is actually the target that is the belly fat. So we get the love handles, belly fat, and I will slowly and gradually the entire body we get uh, the uh, deposit of the fat. So we'll get the increment in the weight. So a kind of weight will be increased, obesity will be increased because of the stress. So this is how stress is responsible to increase the weight. How the stress is increased? This is the way the stress is increased. Cortisol level will increase, gluconeogenesis will take place, and uh, the insulin injection will be lost. And due to which the, blues, the the level of the glucose will remain high in the blood, and that will not be uptaken by the cells or will not be used. So there won't be any glycogen uh, storage. Means there won't be conversion of the glucose to, into, into glycogen. Or you can say in short liver and muscles and some other cells they will not store the glucose. But this glucose will be converted into uh, fat by means of their diffusion into the adipose tissue so where they will convert into fat directly so this is how glucose is converting directly into fat and it is not used then so now the unused glucose is converting into fat by this mechanism so this like this what is happening when the fat is increasing in the body so we're getting we are gaining the weight and we're becoming obese so this is how obesity and weight gain is caused because of the cortisol because of the stress now let's come to the next point that is how the diabetes is caused because of the stress simple when the stress is increased cortisol is increased and this high cortisol concentration will cause gluconeogenesis and inhibition of the action of the insulin so when there is no action of the insulin what is going to be seen there that is that is the blood glucose level will remain high so we know that high blood glucose level is seen in the diabetes patients in type 2 diabetes what is happening thereby there is no uh, activity of the insulin observed so then we go through medication to treat the particular disease so now what you are supposed to do if you want to handle the weight uh, so a weight gain or to save yourself protect yourself from diabetes and some other diseases you are supposed to uh, go through this particular point that is the stress remove the stress by certain methods what we are doing is we're trying our level best to get out of the stress we are having stress everybody has stress so what I do practically is I observe Sola I recite Quran, I do exercise, and I try to forget whatsoever the hell is happening around us. So let's pray to Allah, Allah Almighty and uh, observe all the best that is being taught by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Thank you for watching, guys.